Okay, so today, September 19th, 2011, uh, lesson 1.3. Carl, what page is it? 47. Page 47. 27. Oh, sorry, 27. Thank you. Okay, we're doing function notation. So, if you guys recall, I showed you just the other day. All it is is it's saying the function with the variable x in it. Now, normally, we're used to seeing an equation look like this. y is equal to 2x plus 3x minus 1, okay? What we've done is we've just replaced our y with f at x, okay? Most of the functions in this course are going to be written this way now. It's essentially the same thing in terms of graphing. Anytime we have to graph, we'll just replace the f at x with the y. It's the same idea, okay? All this is telling us is that we have some function. Remember, we discovered that those things, what a function was, and it has the variable x in it. Okay? With this notation, we'll know when we need to sub something in for the variable x. So, to start, I'm going to use a very simple one. We have our function, f at x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. So that's the same function from above. The question is going to be, I need to solve for f at 2, it's called. Okay? And what that means is I'm going to write it in the line below. f at 2 is equal to, I'm going to replace all the x's in the equation with the variable 2. Okay? So I left with 2 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 3 times 2, minus 1. How did you get f2? That was the question. They asked me to solve for f at 2. Okay? So, our f at 2, simply what we have to do now is follow our bed mass rule. So, we have 2 squared first. 2 squared is 4, so I'm left with 2 times 4. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1. The next line we have 4 times 2, which is 8. Oh, that's not supposed to be a 5. Plus 5. And 8 plus 5 is 13. Yes, yeah, so you can keep the F at 2 all the way down. Because what this finally says at the end, because they asked us what F at 2 was, we discovered that F at 2 is equal to 13. That was the value of it when we plugged in the number 2 for our x variable. All right, so we're done. Okay, next example. We'll call this example number 2. F for a half. So, the exact same idea. F at x, that means this is the function, and the function when it has the variable x involved. We're going to be looking when x is a half. So we have f at a half is equal to 2, and we're going to substitute again or 0.5. It's up to you how you'd like to do it. We're going to substitute the value of a half in for the two x variables. So we have 1 half to the power of 2 plus 3 times 1 half minus 1. f at a half is equal to. Now remember this says a half times 1 half. So I'll do it in red on the side. That says 1 half times one half. Whenever we have a power of something, we multiply the base that many times. So we multiply the top numbers, we get one. Bottom ones, we get four. So we're left with two Oops. times one over four. We multiply three times a half. Yeah, it could be 1.5. Or if we're going to do it as fractions, we multiply the tops by each other and the bottoms, we'll end up with 3 over 2 minus 1. Okay? We keep going to the next line. 2 times 4, again, multiplying fractions. So 2 over 4 plus, now, 3 over 2 minus 1. I'm going to turn these all into the denominator of 4 since we found out that our first one's going to end up as 4. So to turn this into 4, I'd multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So I end up with 6 over 4. And 1 to have a denominator of 4 would be 4 over 4. 
So I've turned all the fractions that have common denominators because I have to add and subtract them. So f flat 1 half is equal to 2 plus 6 is 8 over 4, and 8 over 4 minus 4 over 4 f at a half will equal 4 over 4, or how else could I write that? One. Or the number 1. It's so much easier to if you found that easier, that's fine. I, I prefer using fractions. Okay, so we're using the same equation. The difference this time is we're looking for f at x when x is equal to 3x. Okay? So this is a little different. We're going to be substituting 3x in for all of the x variables. So, when I go to plug that in, I'm left with 2 times 3x squared plus 3 times 3x minus 1. So, when we go to multiply these, first we deal with the exponent. 3x times 3x. Anyone know? 9x squared. Yes, so we have 2 times 9x squared plus 3 times 3x will be 9x minus 1. And finally, 2 times 9x squared is 18x squared plus 9x minus 1. All of these are different terms, so I can't simplify any farther. So this would be our final answer. f at 3x is equal to 18x squared plus 9x minus 1. So, when I did 3x squared, that's the same as writing 3x times 3x. So when I do that, I multiply 3 times 3, which will give me 9, and I multiply x times x. x times x is going to be x squared. So we end up with 9x squared when I square 3x. So, our last example, they're asking us to solve f at 5, subtracted by f at 4. This is our function, so that means I need to plug 5 into this entire function, get that, and I need to subtract 4 when it's plugged into this entire function. Oh, that's so much work, it's like half an hour. So, right? I'm going to set that all up right now. Oh my god. So, this will equal 2 times, in the first example I'm going to be substituting 5 in for x, minus 3 times 5, minus 1. I'm going to put that all in brackets because that right there is representing our f at 5. Okay? So the equation was 2. Thank you, Carlo. It's supposed to be plus. Okay? So that represents our f at 5. Then I needed to subtract in brackets again, the same equation, but this time we plugged 4 in. Okay? So, I put brackets around that too because that's re representing our f at 4. I need to solve for both of, the, both of those and then I need to subtract those two numbers. So, we'll go through the first one. 5 squared is 25. 5 times 3 is 15, minus 1, subtracted by 4 squared is 16, plus 12, minus 1. 2 times 25 is going to give us 50, plus 14, that was 15 minus 1. 2 times 16 is 32, plus 11, 15 is 64, 50 plus 14, subtracted by, and we'll keep the brackets around it, 43. Now these brackets, because there's no other numbers in that, are simplified. So we can drop both brackets and just make it 64, subtract 43, which is going to give us 17? 21. 21. 21. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 21. Okay. So... What that says is f at 5 subtracted by f at 4 is 21. Okay, so just to repeat the question we've just done. The question asked us to solve our function 
when x was 5, and then the subtracted by the same function again, but when x was 4. So we set it up, we had our 2, and we replaced x with 5 in both of the equations. So we had 2 times x squared plus 3 times 5 minus 1. I put brackets around it just so I know to just solve the f at 5 first. The second part is the exact same function again. This time we're replacing 4 with x. So we get 2 times 4 to the power of 2 plus 3 times 4 minus 1. So once we've set up f at 4, we've plugged it into the equation. All I'm doing is simplifying from there. 5 squared is 25. 3 times 5 is 13. 4 squared is 16. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 25 is 50. 15 minus 1 is 14. 6 times 2 is 32. And 12 minus 1 is 11. 50 and 14 is 64. 32 and 11 is 43. And finally, 64, whoops, minus 43 is 21.